Hi, does your Dyson make this sound? <coughs> Where it's pulsing and it stops to suck up? I know I've had it myself and it's really frustrating. So in this video I want to show you how to solve it. It doesn't matter with whether you've got the V6, V7, V8, the V10, V11, V15, or even the new Outsize Absolute. I've got a solution for you to show you how to solve it. Just before I start, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up. What I do is I talk about household appliances. I do specialise in cordless vacuums as well, and there's normally a bit of tech in there. So just give us a quick subscribe, then we'll make a start. Having all the Dysons here together, it's almost like a bit of a family reunion, getting everyone together. Uh, especially with the old V6. Uh, it's one we haven't sold for several years now, uh, but I managed to, to find one for the purpose of this video. Uh, but really what I want to do is to show you how simple it can be without having to call an engineer or without having to call Dyson themselves to rectify this problem, because normally it is something pretty simple. The reason it's making the pulsing sound is it's the vacuum's way of telling you that it's got restricted airflow through the system. Uh, now, I know it's frustrating, but it is technology that's designed within the vacuum. Uh, I suppose it's, it's a good way of saying that you know, somewhere along the line we have a blockage. Uh, now, the first thing I'd always say is just empty the bin. Now, clearly this varies on each model. So, on the V6, as you can see here, this is a very, very well used one. Uh, it does still work. Uh, it is still in operation. But as you can see here, the bin is it's probably about a third full at the moment. Uh, so all I'm going to do is just to empty the bin. So now I've done that uh, on the V6. It's not quite as easy as some of the modern models. Uh, but on that one you have to press and hold that button. And what will happen is that that will push down. And then the bottom of the bin will open. Uh, as you go over to the V7 and the V8. So this model, I'm just using this one. This is one of the V7 animal models. Uh, but essentially it's exactly the same across the V7 and the V8. So to empty the bin on that, all you do is you just raise that. And what you need to do is when you're doing this, so when you've emptied the bin, first of all you need to check to make sure there are no blockages within the end here. So that's the first tip. Just have a look down here. Uh, I mean this model is pretty new anyway. We do use it as a demonstration model. Uh, so sometimes they do get quite dirty. Just have a look within the end here. Uh, you will see at some point that there is a, a little flap. Uh, it's probably quite difficult to tell in there uh, because the, the, to be fair, the light isn't brilliant here. Uh, but in the end, there is a little flap and sometimes it moves across. Uh, if, you, if you're sucking up large particles, sometimes it could be things like breakfast cereal or um, other bits and bobs, then what you'll find sometimes the, the flap can actually move across to the wrong way and what that will do is that will restrict the airflow. If you found that emptying the bin doesn't help on the V7 or V8 then what you really want to do is to take the bin off to have a look to see if there are any further blockages inside. And to do that, first of all you've got two buttons at the top here so just press that and the top part will be released. And then what you can do is you can take the bin off and to do that, again, it's a very simple process. You've got a button underneath here, press that in, and then the bin is released. And that just gives you better access, uh, especially if you want to get on the inside here to get any dirt or debris out. And then to put it back together, you just clip that back into place, and then pop the top back on. That's it, just gently tap it down, and then hopefully that should solve the problem. As we go onto the V10 to remove the bin. So again, first of all, just have a look in the end there to see if there are any blockages. Um, I suppose really what I should have mentioned, if it's doing it when you're using it, so if it's making the pulsing sound when you're using it as an upright vacuum, I suppose one of the first things to check is just make sure there are no blockages within the long pipe, because uh, that could be a common problem, especially if you've had the vacuum for a while. I suppose it's almost assuming that you've done that. Um, also within the main floor head, just have a look because as it goes round the bend like that, uh, some of them are quite sharp bends, you can get blockages in there as well. Uh, but if you've had a look through your tools and made sure there are no blockages, then uh, this is really the, the next thing to look at. So as we go up to the V10, again, just have a look, make sure there are no blockages within the vacuum itself. If you need to remove the bend as you go onto this model, then you've got the little button at the bottom there, just pull that. And what that does, that just gives you much better access around here, just around the outside. 
Uh, I have done a lot of cleaning videos on all of these uh, Dyson models. Uh, apart from the Outsize Absolute, um, I've done them on the V6, V7, V8, V10, V11 and even the new V15. I've done sort of full cleaning videos. So if any of these solutions don't work, then I have provided uh, several links below just to show you uh, my cleaning videos as well. Because they're, they're pretty comprehensive, uh, but really all I'm trying to do is just show you some quick solutions. Uh, as you So hopefully uh, that might have solved the problem. If not, then we just need to pop the bin back on for now. Similar to that model there, where the V7 and the V8 use the same chassis, uh, the V11 and the V15 are very similar when it comes to the actual design of the vacuum. So everything I show you on this is exactly the same whether you've got the V11 or the V15. On the V15, you've got a really nice display and it actually shows you when you've got an airway that's blocked. Uh, so what it's doing, uh, well, first of all, I'll just show you. So you can just hear, it's not, not quite as noticeable as on some of the earlier models, uh, but what it's doing is it's just showing you different recommendations. So first of all, it's saying to have a look down the, the main wand. So, and then at the end there, that's the main floor head. And then it's, so I, I really like that. It's just trying to give you uh, some help as to where the problem could be. Uh, but first of all, I'd normally just say, empty the bin just make sure there are no blockages at the end. And similar to the V10, uh, on the, the V11 and the V15, you've just got the handle underneath. So all you need to do is just push that down. And it's a similar design to the V10, where if you just press the, press the button in, you can take the bin off. Uh, as you can see here, this, it, it is used a bit. So we've used it quite a few times as a demonstrator in our showroom. And I suppose what I'd normally recommend is after you've emptied the bin, just make sure that this is completely clean. Uh, I'd normally just get a get a, a paintbrush. Uh, make sure you do it in an area that is well ventilated, and just tap that back up. Uh, what you'll find is sometimes when you empty the bin, especially on some of the larger capacity bins, which is what I'm going to show you now, then you can find because they contain a lot of dirt. Then as soon as you empty that, you get a, sometimes a cloud of dust come back up at you. Now this is the big boy in the range. This is the outsize absolute. Uh, even when you compare it to the V15, look at the, the bin capacity size. It, it is huge. It's a monster. Now people buying this must really, really enjoy vacuuming. Uh, but similar to the V11 and the V15, uh, as far as the bin, although it's much bigger, it still uses the same way to empty it. So all you need to do is just press that down. And then again, if you need to, empty it. So take the bin off like that. And again, all I'd recommend is just to get a paintbrush and brush it around the outside here. Just make sure there are uh, nothing blocking the holes on the inside here as well. So once you've done that, so once you've emptied the bin, just check that there's nothing on the inside. Then the next thing to check are the filters. I would say blockages are one of the main problems when it comes to the pulsing of any Dyson vacuum. But the other main problem is always down to the filtration. Now, first of all, what you want to do is take the filter out. And as you can see on each filter, it has got a picture of a tap. And what you can do is you can just go and wash that. Uh, but what you will find is there are normally certain ways to wash these. Um, if you've got the, the, the V6, V7 or V8, then they use this kind of filter. Uh, this has been a standard filter for years now uh, and it doesn't matter whether you go for the as I say the V6 or even the V7 or V8 the central filter is the same it's actually the same uh, design as well and as you can see they've they changed the design a little bit on it as far as the I think they made it a bit more obvious that it's a tap on there compared to the earlier V6 uh, but again when it comes to washing that uh, just make sure, and it's the same with any of the filters, and I say it in all of my videos, make sure that once you've washed this, that it is completely dry before you put it back in the vacuum. And when I say completely dry, it normally takes around 24, possibly 48 hours. It depends on the ambient temperature that you're letting it dry in. 
but what I'd normally say is once you buy a vacuum, just go and buy a spare filter. Um, I will I'll provide some links below for the for the spare filters at good prices uh, that we tend to use quite a bit. Um, but what you can do is when you've washed the filter, there's nothing worse than not being able to use a vacuum for a day or even a couple of days. So by buying a filter, they're not that expensive now. Um, then what it enables you to do is to let that dry completely on the side uh, and then put your other filter in the vacuum and then you're not without it. So on different models the filter arrangements are completely different. So that's the main filter um, and as you can see with this you've got little clips at the top here. So when you come to wash it just take that apart um, and make sure that you wash it um, in just in cold water. It doesn't have to be in warm water. Uh, but just make sure, I suppose it's really recommended to wash it upside down as well. Because what you don't want to do is to have all the dirt and a gunk going towards the bottom because it's sealed there. So just wash it upside down as well. Uh, and on the V6 and V7 and the V8, on certain models, depending on which one you go for, you have a filter on the back as well. So you've got that one there. As you go to the V10, then the filter on here is slightly different. Uh, it's an all-in-one filter, so you only have one filter on this model. Uh, as you can see, there is a picture just at the back here. Hopefully you can see that, it's a picture of a tap, and it is recommending to wash it that way round. Uh, so I suppose you, you just hold it like that, and then just put the water in here. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm not really sure about that. Uh, I'll, Again, I think if you if you if it's dirty around here, then if you're washing all of the dirt into the bottom, I'm not quite sure I agree with that. Uh, I suppose what I'd prefer to do is to try and wash it either sideways or or even upside down if you can get water into there, because then what it's doing is it's releasing all of the dirt and dust and it's coming out rather than just sitting in the bottom. But anyway, that's on the V10. Uh, as you go up to the next models, so this is a very similar design whether it's the V11, V15, uh, it's open-ended here. Uh, so I suppose that they've sort of learned from that rather than having it sealed at the end, then you know, it's much better just to, to have it open. And then when it comes to washing the filter, you can just get the, the dirt that is drained all the way through. And then this is just really a bigger version as you go to the outsize model. Uh, again, it's got a picture of a, a tap on there, but again, I know I keep saying it, but make sure the filters are completely dry, especially with this. So you've got like a, it's like a foam design in here. Um, and what you'll find that can take some time to dry. So just go and buy a spare filter. If you've had your Dyson vacuum for a while and it started to make this pulsing sound, as far as the filters, if you've washed and washed them, so if you've carried on washing them quite a few times, it could be a case that it's just, that you just need to replace the filter. Uh, we do find that, that after, could be a year, couple of years of use, and if you have washed it really well, then just go and buy a new one, because you could find that that could solve the problem. So if you've been through those stages, so if you've emptied the bin, make sure there's no blockages anywhere along the line. Uh, then if you've checked the filters, so if you've washed the filters, and if you've washed it several times, and if you've replaced the filter, if that still doesn't work, uh, then just check out for any damage on the vacuum. And what I mean by damage is on this one, so on this V6, as you can see here, at the top here, the, the filter is actually damaged. But what the owner of this vacuum may have found is that the suction on the vacuum isn't as good as it should be, purely because of the crack in the filter. Now, as far as the vacuum itself, it's fine. Uh, it does still work okay. Uh, but clearly the filter needs replacing because it's got the, the nasty crack at the top. The other thing, and I suppose one of the final things to mention, is that the bin at the bottom has to be located properly. And the reason I mention this, because I did have a customer recently uh, that was talking about this, about the pulsing sound, and we'd gone through everything. So we'd gone through the, uh, the blockages, the filters, replaced the filters, and it was still doing the pulsing sound, and it was really frustrating. Uh, I was determined to find out what it was. And it turns out at the bottom here, that the, uh, the little flap wasn't sealing properly because it was quite dirty on the inside. Um, I, I won't show you on, on all of the models because this is, is very similar on all of them, but you've actually got a rubber seal on the inside here. Um, so what I'd normally recommend, when you take, so when you empty it, 
if, if you take the bin off, then just get a damp microfiber cloth. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely wet, just slightly damp. Just wipe the inside of the bin out, just make sure it's nice and clean. And when you're doing that, wipe around the rubber seal as well, just to make sure that is completely and utterly clean. Because what you can find is sometimes that is the problem. It's not any of the other issues I've had. So hopefully, by doing all of those, you will have to solve the problem of the pulsing on the vacuum. Um, if doing all of that hasn't solved it, then unfortunately I'll probably recommend to contact Dyson uh, because it looks like there could be more of a serious problem. But I hope you've enjoyed this quick video on the how to solve the pulsing problem on the Dyson vacuums. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up. Uh, I do always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad, about the video. If it has helped, then please let me know. I'd always appreciate the feedback. If it hasn't helped, then again, let me know because I, I do always appreciate constructive feedback. I'm not always after positive feedback. So just let me know what you think. Has it solved the problem for you? Anyway, thanks for watching.